Okay, there is no one in our waiting room and it is 6.43, so I think we can start. So this is a continuation of a hearing um, continued from May 21st of Amy Francis and Jesse Hassinger to um, have a, two fam a special permit for a two family home at 27 Masterson Road. And um, their attorney, Peter Lane is here and sent quite a few documents to us earlier today. And I know that you said that you would walk us through the pertinent points orally, if you'd like. I do have your documents uh, to share screen if and when you want me to, or if you prefer, I can make you a co-host. Sure, why don't you do that? And then I'll, I'll be happy to share. Thank you. Okay. Um, and I assume I'm being seen and heard. I was having all kinds of issues trying to get in here. You okay. are very clearly. Thank you. <laughs> Um, and you should be okay as co-host. Okay, great. Thanks so much. Um, so hi again, I am Peter Lane and I am representing the applicants. I think the first thing that I just want to get on the record here is a preliminary uh, housekeeping issue. Um, uh, my client, Amy Francis, um, uh, she, submitted an application uh, as an individual, but um, as I've explained in my narrative, um, Amy is the sole manager of the LLC that actually took title uh, directly from Amy's mother uh, last year. Um, and so to the extent that we need to do anything to amend the application, uh, we will do so, but I just wanted to put on the record, um, I'm here on behalf of the LLC that owns the property. Uh, and that uh, the application is really um, more properly made by Live It, Love It, and Crumberg LLC, who is the uh, true title owner of the property at 27 Masterson Road. I think that that may be on our agenda. And if you can all wait a moment, I'm going to... It is. It's on the agenda. Yeah, I'm Crumberg. just bringing it up. So, okay. Um, it's on the agenda, but I guess the other issue. Okay, hang on, I'm back. Let me share the screen now. <laughs> Okay, located and owned by. So I don't know, we have two attorneys with us. Is that going to satisfy or do we need to make an amendment? <laughs> um, yeah, I feel as long as the owner was identified that, that there's no need for a formal amendment. It's, it's called close enough for government business. Okay, thank you, Roger. Okay. Uh, okay. Great, thanks so much. Um, and uh, I have Secretary of Commonwealth documents, and of course you saw the uh, the deed documents. Uh, if you need me to, I can walk through uh, showing you how Amy is the manager of the LLC and how the LLC is is the is the entity that took title from um, from Amy's mother, uh, Ms. Mead, before she uh, passed away. I think we can skip that. So okay. I, I okay. had looked at it myself independently even before you were on board. Great. Peter, so, um, I'm satisfied. Great. Thanks, Roger. Um, so then, uh, as you might have seen in my my narrative, I, I, I don't think we are at any kind of a final place uh, on exactly what we are asking for at this moment. What I was hoping to do this evening is present to you, uh, as requested, a history of the property, um, a history of uh, uh, ownership, and a history of um, <laughs> permitted improvements. Um, and uh, I think the most important thing to note is that, near as we can tell, uh, from, um, from the town's assessor's records, 
Uh, and again, we requested uh, from the tax assessor, we, we, we requested um, what they could give us um, of property records. And if I can share my screen. Mm -hmm. uh, one for so. It appears I can. OK, thank you. Um, so beginning. And again, these are just what we were able to gather in the last month. And oops, that is freezing my screen. Hold on one second. Huh. I'm going to stop sharing. Nope, I can't even stop sharing. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so my shared screen is now frozen and I can't even stop sharing. Um, I might be having issues, as I said trying to get in. Could I, uh, I don't know if it causes procedural issues, could I uh, disconnect and try to reconnect to the- Absolutely, of okay. course. All right, uh, let's see if, nope. Nope, okay. Nope, sorry, I don't know is or why any of this is happening. Um, um, we could, let's see, I'm trying to see if I can do something. I'm going to see if I can, I'm going to take, not, let's see if I can stop you from being yeah. a co-host, Peter. <laughs> um, I have just removed your co-host permission. Hmm. So... You see if you can disconnect and come back in. Can you do that? Yeah, let me, uh, no, everything on my computer is now frozen. All right. Um, I'm going to simply shut down and reconnect. I'm so sorry for this. That's okay. That's okay. Okay. Thanks. Oh, wait. There's something. Oh, you're back. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm still going to leave and try to reconnect uh, if okay. that's all right. Thanks. That's I'll, be, I'll be right back. Thank you. Now, is there a reason why? that we need to know the the past owners well we're trying there were i think we'll wait for him to come back and let us know he did put that in his narrative the two paths to a special permit but i i don't want to step on on his arguments Oh, okay, he is back. Hi, I'm here again. <laughs> So, yeah, virtual background is still loading. You know, one thing you might want to do when you share, because these are very, I don't know what you're trying to share. Some of those mm -hmm. files are really big, is you may, when you share the screen, you want to maybe turn off your video. You may have too much on. Yeah, uh, something is up with the video, uh, and I can see that when I'm coming in. So uh, I'll do that. So here, um, let me start here before I start sharing the screen. Oh, but uh, Peter, I'm sorry, I need to make you a co-host again. Sure, thanks. <laughs> okay, I thought we were. Okay. Um, look, if I could just start with a broad overview here. Um, uh, Amy, uh, as I said, is manager of an LLC, took title uh, last year just before her mother deceased. Um, the, 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 their purpose, she and her mother were trying to create, you know, a uh, a more livable, multi-generational residence. Uh, Amy and her partner uh, were living with her mother uh, since her mother took title to the house. Um, and then um, last year, what they applied to do and thought that they were doing was simply moving um, 
you know, the, the, the kitchen space that was in the house when her mother purchased it, uh, to the, uh, the, uh, uh, space that they were building over the garage. Uh, and it seemed that the building inspector understood that to be the case as well. Um, sadly in the interim, of course, uh, Amy's mom died. Um, and when Amy uh, met with the building inspector to, uh, get sign off on the construction and get a certificate of occupancy. Um, what was going on suddenly looked to the building inspector as if a single family home was being converted to a two family home. Um, again, um, and as I'll show in these documents, both Amy's mom and Amy herself, it always appeared to them that they had always owned a two family home. Um, and it also now appears from tax records that the town of Waitley itself was aware, at least through the tax assessor's office, was a, was was aware that there was an additional living space, uh, at least an additional kitchen uh, installed in the walkout basement. Um, we can't quite figure out when that was constructed, um, but if I can share my screen, I'll just start with the... Um, property cards from the tax assessor. All right, try it again. Whoops, let me start by shutting off my video. Okay. And sharing my screen. Okay. Nope, looks like it did it again. You want me to try? <laughs> I think so, Deborah. Thank you. Um, okay, so I'm going to need some direction about which document. So let me take yeah. you away from a co-host if you could that'd be great and okay. then all right thanks all right so okay. um what i have peter which document do you want me to bring up there was something you, I couldn't yeah. find them up. <laughs> could you open exhibit two yes people need to bear with me while i do that Okay, because the only thing I could have up at this time was the narrative. So hang on. Um, I am going to. There's something very odd about. No, okay. I'm trying to get out of this. All right. Um, I'm having difficulty getting out. Okay, stop the recording. Can I okay. can I just interrupt for a second? Please. I thought the issue was was that now there are three kitchens, not two kitchens, mm -hmm. and that's why the building inspector said, "Whoa, there's three kitchens there now, and there was only going to be two kitchens." Is that not true? No, um, yeah, I don't. I don't think that's. Yep. And I, I'm, I'm not sure either, Kristen. But my, I, I thought that the building inspector thought that it was an apartment that was going to be another, going to be moved to be an apartment, and then it became a full scale house. But I am ready to share the screen. So exhibit two is here. Thank you so much. Um, okay. So uh, we requested from the tax assessor, we we um, we requested uh, what they could give us of property cards uh, because an online search uh, showed that there was there was already some sense, at least in terms of tax assessment, that the town had an awareness of. Uh, multiple kitchens. Um, and um, Deborah, if you could scroll to the next page, this looks to be the 2015 fiscal year. Whoops, just, uh, I'm sorry, just, just the very, you. that's fine. Um, you can see up here in the comments section. Up here. And this, yeah. And this starts in 20, at least with the records that we received so far, they begin in 2015. And beginning in 2015, the uh, Tax assessor's office starts indicating really nice renovations, second kitchen and basement, August 2011. 
Uh, I don't know, and I haven't. We haven't been able to determine yet if that's exactly when a kitchen, um, an additional living space was created in the walkout basement. But um, again, since 2015, the town seems to be aware that there were two kitchens uh, in the house. Could uh, I just ask a question, Peter? At at any point on these documents. Does any official make a distinction between an apartment? Does does is the word apartment used in any way? Because I, that I, I, yeah, I haven't seen the word apartment. I, I, okay. I, we we see in the comments really nice renovation, second kitchen and basement. If you keep going around the time that uh, Amy's mom took title in twenty seventeen, um, am, am I in in the right place? Yeah, I'm not. I I can't see the bottom, the full bottom of the screen because the yeah the the year is indicated down at the bottom of the card. See, um, it is calling it a one family. I see that it continually calls it a one family, but then also continually notes that there is this additional. It just refers to the kitchen, but it was a separate living space. Um, uh, and it. Well, that's... there were certainly many houses that were one families that had apartments. And that's, I think that's where, I, what I was looking for. Like, did they ever call it a two family? But um, I, I don't ever see it. I don't see it called a two family or taxed as a two family. No. Okay. Um, simply just that when the assessor is there and inspecting, what they continue noting from 2015 forward is that there was um, kitchen installed in the basement. Um, and then uh, the comments, as the years go on, the comments start to also include um, information about uh, the sale transaction between um, the prior owner and Ms. Mead, Amy's mom, uh, including the asking price and eventual sale prices. Um, relative to the fact that there's a second kitchen in the basement. Uh, so, no, I don't see any recognition that it's a two-family house, um, just simply that there was an awareness, uh, at least in the tax assessor's office. Um, also, I, I think this just helps us um, understand that my clients had nothing to do with the creation of the kitchen. Right. Um, they took title believing that they were buying, that they were getting a two family home. Um, so, um, to the extent necessary, I could also go through the deeds so you can just see that, you know, that here between the town's tax records noting that a kitchen was installed maybe 2011, at least at some point before 2015 in the basement. Um, Ms. Mead, Amy's mom, um, Deborah, if we could go to exhibit one. Okay, I'm going to need to stop and go out again and get I, it. I, I know that that apartment and kitchen have been there since at least 1999. Oh. Was, I, I looked to buy that house in 1999. <laughs> and it... Um, you have local wisdom. Okay, great. <laughs> and, and it had already had an apartment in it. And, and had for some time, the people who were living there previously um, had been divorced and he moved from the upstairs into the downstairs. Right, so I saw there's a transfer between a couple to an individual that I assume that had something to do with the divorce. Okay. Yeah, I think that was in the 80s or, you know, that that happened. But in 1999, it was definitely, you know, a full-fledged, you know, apartment or in or additional something in in the basement that does oh. appear on the town records. Yes. Okay. But it, um, it never calls it a two family though. No, and I, I if that, Kristen, that's the it, it, that's where I was having trouble because I'm not quite sure how you can take you can purchase a house thinking it's a two family when when the assessors are calling it a one family, and that doesn't mean that there wasn't an apartment in there. There clearly right. was. Yes. Um, but it it's it it I mean it was an assessed home of a one family home. I, I completely understand. Um and 
I'm not trying to spread blame around. I'm, I think my more, <laughs> uh, my more specific point is, uh, my clients did not create, um, an additional kitchen. Um, so the, oh, well, yeah, well, yes, they did. They created a third kitchen over in, in what was the garage. But with the intention of taking the kitchen out, taking the, the second kitchen out of the main house. But they but they haven't. It's still there. We went there. Yes, I understand, but they will. As part of this entire project. They do not intend to create three separate living units. Oh, I, I think I I think I understand that part of it. I think the, the bigger the the hump to get over. And is, is that there was clearly an apartment, you know, Kristen knows, you know, Kristen knows that property, mm. there was clearly an apartment, but it was assessed as a one family. And now the applicants would like the property to be a two family. So, um, and I understand that they said they will take out the other kitchen so that it doesn't become a multifamily. Um, and, but so the issue is what is the what argument it can be made for this property to be a two family since it has since the most the records that you have provided show it to have been a one family but that's how i'm seeing it but you know anybody else here can can so they, they don't talk. want it to be a one family with an apartment over the garage <laughs> no it's a two family now. So what makes it different from a yeah, that's what I'm wondering. One that, family I, with yeah. an apartment. I'm well, the size of an apartment in a house is is limited in our bylaws. But it's not that a two family isn't allowed. They are allowed. It's 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 the you know, it's it it's deficient in frontage for that. And I saw that that was another one of your paths to this. Sure. So again, I was trying to establish history. If it's not necessary to establish history, then. Uh, I, I'm only speaking for myself, please. Other sure, members. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I left last meeting feeling tasked with presenting a history of the, of the property. Yes. And you have done that. And because yeah. we didn't know it was assessed as a one family. Okay. Or I didn't. I didn't know that. So, so it again, all the tax assessment records we have show it is consistently taxed as one family, but with somehow the noting that there's actually a a second li uh, residential unit within. Um, uh, I, I don't understand how that occurs, but that is what has occurred, um, and uh, I. I understand that whatever my client would have believed when she took title, um, the fact is she took title to property that was always assessed as a one family. Um, what I really wanted to establish was that my clients were not responsible for the basement living space. Yes, um, and you, it, you have done that. Okay. So um, all I was going to do with the deeds was just kind of show uh, further put into the record um, that when you compare the tax assessment records and the deed, his deed histories, uh, it just confirms that that kitchen was in there in the basement uh, well before Ms. Mead took title and then transferred title to Amy through the LLC. Yes. Um, I, think, I think that's been done. What I was hoping to talk about, have you talk about is they then go to apply for the building permit. Right. What language did they use in the building permit? Or well, we saw the building permit. Why did they use the language that they did in the building permit? Because I think that's where the building inspector claims he was um, led afoul, if you want to use that wording. Because it doesn't, it, do you have the building permit? No, yeah, hold on. One second.
um, the original building permit may be on the town's website if somebody wants to go out i mean it's it's in our waitley website and the agenda we do have a link i don't know Kristen, if you can in look at that agenda and go to that link maybe and then i can make you a co-host and you can, <laughs> you can show um, the building permit uh, uh, peter did you not send that in the email uh today or yesterday the building uh, permit? the let me see because I sent the history of the permit. Oh, the, right, the permits. Let me uh, let me see if I can. Hang on, let me just go out. That would have been that's the one that's about a hundred pages long. So um, that's Exhibit Three. That's a Google. Okay, all right. Hang on, folks. I um, so okay. I think I can share this. All right. Yeah, I have it too. So yeah. Okay. So Peter, it's up now. Do you do you? This is like. Do you know what page this was on? Or so, um, I have things broken yeah. out in individuals. It's going to be at the end. These this this yeah. should be there chronologically. It is. Yep. So I I can. All right. Let me. Oh, I went too far. Um. This is plumbing. I think here is the one you're looking for. Electrical work. Just before that. Electrical work. Okay, construct, repair, renovate, or demolish. I believe that is the one. That is the one. Okay, is this what you're looking for, Robert? Uh, Roger? Can you scroll down a little bit? Yeah. Two, okay. So it was 10, 123. I think that is the one. Um, we are demolishing the garage and putting an additional living space where the garage is currently. Please see attached plans. Okay. So the wording there me doesn't put anyone on notice about what it is you say you're trying to do it doesn't say we are putting on additional living space dismantling one kitchen and reinstalling that kitchen or a similar kitchen where the garage is currently it, it, it doesn't mention a kitchen it doesn't mention an additional um, apartment. Additional living space could mean just expanding the square footage of the house. And so my question is, did you have plans that were more detailed and showed what you would no. say you were trying to accomplish? If you keep if you keep scrolling down down, Kristen, yeah, we're okay. in, on the on the next document where it says installing rough in and finished plumbing in the new living space, including one full bath with laundry, one and a half bath and kitchen area on the main floor. And mm -hmm. is this is this where I'm looking, Kristen? Yeah, um, have I gone too far? Oh, no, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I'm not looking at your document. It's the next to the last page. Okay, can you? Look at my screen. Is that the one uniform application for permit to do plumbing? We'll keep going down. Keep going down. Uh, yes, one full bath with laundry, one and a half bath on main floor and kitchen area on main floor. Is that it? Yep. Okay. So, so this is the main floor of which? The the new oh, place. The new the new one. Uh, the one that had been a garage. Mm -hmm. Well, it's still a garage. Yeah. Okay, well, that that does help to flush out the, um, the scope of what you're asking for. Now, are these permits at the same time? Uh, it, it, it looks like they came at different moments. Um, so 
you know, as you know, I, I was retained by Amy, by the LLC, the current owner, uh, in the last six weeks or so, um, <clears throat> or maybe two months ago at this point. Um, and um, it looks like her mother with the contractor submitted these first one, these um, these applications. Um, Amy had submitted information last year, I believe, mm -hmm. trying to explain their purpose, uh, at least to this board. Um, okay, I so this is the date of November 14, 23. This is after we had a hearing originally, right? I, yeah, I, I, this is where Amy said to us they had their permit. They didn't need to come back to us. All right. Now, was this a, this is an application. Did you get a building permit that encompasses this plumbing application? Or let me put, what was the date of the building permit? Uh, let me go back. The initial permit looks to be um, January of 2023. Okay. But January 23. So that couldn't have included this plumbing permit uh, request just by date uh, sequence. All right. So, so this, I guess, Peter, is kind of the additional narrative that I was hoping to see a, a, a walking through of the permit because that's as confusing as, as the ownership and it's as confusing as what kitchen was where when. So, yeah, I'm still left scratching my head a little bit. So how does this this plumbing application relate to the building permit issued earlier in time? Which the ultimate question is, what did you guys ask for? I think you say the building permit, <laughs> the building inspector did something wrong. Did you did you wrong? By never not... uh, never alleged that <laughs> that the building inspector has done anything wrong. Um, um, as I understand things, um, there the building inspector believed that what was being done was no longer consistent with what was originally requested. Yes. Um, yes. And that what was originally requested was... Uh, Yes, creating additional living space, but for the purpose of having a a continual one family home with just multiple living spaces. Frankly, I don't understand that distinction <laughs> uh, between a one family home with multiple living spaces and a two family home. Um, but uh, I, I believe we have a letter from the building inspector. Um, now, are are these the 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 are the is the new space connected to the older space, just like the basement apartment was? I mean, are they connected? They're connected through a breezeway. Uh, okay. Um, so that they are connected by some sort of. You can right. You can. Uh, there's a. They're not like totally separate. There's an enclosed breezeway now that allows you to walk from the main house uh, over to the uh, the new construction. But in your narrative, you said that um, Amy and Jesse hope to rent the other side. So I'm assuming you, I can walk through the breezeway and knock on the door, but it's not, it's a separate entity. I mean, I, I mean, they clearly want to make a two family home. I at mean, this point, I, I think what's happening is that okay. with Ms. Mead's death, <laughs> they're trying to find some other permissible use for what they've now started to create. And they created it believing that they were in the right and were permitted to do what they were doing. I understand that there, there was probably confusion and they, they may not have had all of the ducks in the row or, or even fully understood the impact of what they were requesting and what they were doing. But at this moment, what, what I'm here to do is, to the best of my ability, answer questions for the board and see what we can do 
to get this into a permissible use. Um, so I think after Ms. Mead passed away is when Amy began to, and especially after the conversation with the building inspector, uh, try to figure out if there is a way that this can be a permitted two family home. Um, so, Uh, as I, and I, I've, I've believe at least some of you have actually toured and have seen its current yes. condition. Yes, uh, all of us. And had a discussion about what was going to come out of the basement uh, living area. Uh, oh, so he, oh, yes. And, yeah, and so that it would no longer be a standalone uh, living space. Um, it would not have, uh, a, it would not have the kitchen items, or at least the kitchen appliances that would make it um, a living space. Yes, and Amy was very forthcoming about that. Um, Jim Hawkins had said that the stove and the refrigerator would, would have to go. Mm -hmm. And, um, but at least again, I speak for myself, it was very clear that both structures mm -hmm. could certainly be independent homes. Sure. I mean, you oh. could lock you could lock the doors on either side of the of the enclosed breezeway, and 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 that was reinforced in your narrative, where the you know the Amy's desire to rent the other side, mm -hmm. and right. and and what was certainly to my eyes, um, the space in the basement, the living space in the basement, was an apartment. The second, the new structure is considerably more than that. And so I, that's my guess as to why this was always listed as a one family with an apartment. And there certainly are. I mean, Kristen has a better knowledge of the structures in town than I do. But I, I certainly am aware of many older homes that have apartments in them, but they're apartments. Um, and of course, the, the application itself wants a two family. So that's that's sort of what I'm trying to sort out. I'm sorry. I, are you asking me a question? That no, no. Okay. I'm just, okay. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> saying. You know. You know. We have an application for a two-family home, right. and on a structure that has historically been assessed as a one, right. that historically oh. has contained an apartment, <laughs> a rental apartment. Yeah, and um, so, and and I think we do understand. Um, and I, I understand that they they will take out the kitchen so that it's not a multifamily home, but um, we're we're still left looking at a structure that is now going from a one family to a two family um, on a lot that doesn't have sufficient frontage for that. Right. Uh, and what I had uh, indicated in my narrative was that. If we were to come back uh, specifically requesting um, through the zoning ordinance a conversion from a single family to a two family, my clients would need to acquire more frontage. Um, and they would explore that uh, with um, they would explore that with a neighbor. Uh, we would first want to just get clarity that, Nice. Well, <laughs> that uh, that 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 assuming they had adequate frontage, uh, that we could uh, get through this process here. Um, and if before my client uh, approaches a neighbor to discuss potential for uh, purchasing additional land. Um, we also were hoping we could discuss and get a sense from the board uh, essentially what the dimensions of that additional land could, uh, could be, uh, meaning my clients wouldn't want to purchase any more land than they absolutely needed to acquire. Um, 
And I would think the town of Waitley, this board in particular, would not want to see something absurd like they acquired a 41 foot wide by 10 foot deep <laughs> adjacent parcel uh, that they then submitted as an A&R uh, to show that they now had adequate frontage for conversion to a two family. Um, so I don't know if if that if anyone feels it's appropriate for us to even have this discussion and try to suss out what the dimensions of an additional parcel should look like uh, so that they have the adequate frontage to come back. Um, but I'd, I'd love to have that conversation if possible. Um, could, could you just remind, you have, this is a lot without public water, correct? Um, well. Yes, maybe. so well. Okay, thanks, Kristen. So, you know, a minimum lot area of a one family is 60,000 square feet. And... Uh, minimum frontage is 200, but a multifamily needs an additional 20,000 square feet of lot area, an additional 75,000 feet of frontage. Now, as I recall, the, the, the lot itself. They've got the adequate um, square footage. Uh, right. They need an additional 41 feet of frontage. They need an additional 41. Um, you know, I, I myself, does anyone know, I mean, if, if just buying a strip of land satisfies that, or is that, I mean, I don't know if you know that Roger, or if that's something we're going to have to, you'd have to investigate in terms of looking at, at other cases where this was done. I honestly haven't come across this one before. I mean, I, I actually, I don't know if Roger, if you have a sense of this, um, all I can say is what I've seen in other a &Rs for this purpose uh, and conversations that I've had with surveyors about it as well, um, I think some towns within the ordinance have uh, have something specific on this issue. I don't see anything specific in Waitley's uh, zoning ordinance on this. No, I don't either. Don't we have a definition of front? Let me take a look in the back. Let me take a look. Maybe not. Um, well, we do not. Yeah. Maybe not. I have I have looked for every instance of the word frontage in the zone ordinance, uh, and I just did not see anything that specifically addressed this. Um, yeah, I mean, ultimately, it's going to be up to the planning board, right? Because they would have to approve the A&R. Approve the a &R, right? Yeah, I mean, so to, to pass the buck, if the if it's approved A&R by the planning right. board, the ZBA runs with that. Um, okay. You know, I mean, I think, you... yeah, I don't think you'd have 41 feet, you know, 10 inches in and then cut off. Right, right. <laughs> that would, that's, possible, maybe... that, that's what I mean. So, uh, and, and so maybe it's, uh, we'll just have to, to, uh, to explore it with the planning board itself then. Um, but, and I agree, most surveyors probably have a good idea about what, what uh, yeah. will fly. Yep. But I have another question. Um, that frontage that, that they would need to acquire mm -hmm. would have to come from either Paul, um, the back neighbor, and I believe he needs that frontage for his lot, you know, because he's like a flag lot in the back, or the farm next door, which I believe has the appropriate amount of, of square footage for their house. So... Where would the square foot, where would the frontage come from? Uh, actually, uh, Amy, could you go ahead and share your thoughts on this? Because um... yeah, yep. So my understanding in looking at the um, in looking at the uh, plot lines and the assessors um, lines of everyone's property, Paul definitely doesn't have it. Paul um, is not someone we can go to, but Lisa has more than um, than oh, she. Yes. Okay. I, yeah, by quite a bit. Um, there's a typo, so it looks like hers is something like three feet and like, um, eighty one, um, three point oh eight or something like that. But clearly, they mean three hundred and eight feet. So she has she has the ability. Okay. Okay. Um, you 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 know, Roger makes an excellent point. I mean, you could informally reach out to the chair of the planning board and and seek an opinion. And and 
see what he has to say. Um, I know they met earlier this evening, um, but it that that seems like a an avenue to explore, definitely. To me, for me, I will say that for me. And I don't have a, I'm not, I'm not a super member just because I'm at the chair right now. I mean, I'm just one voice. Um, well, that was certainly a thought. Um, the other possibility that we'd like to leave open, but it just is going to require further research. I, 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 I have to say, I'm, I'm not super confident about it, but, um, you know, exploring whether uh, there is any kind of application of the, um, uh, 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 pre-existing non-conforming use. I don't, I mean, I, I know the zoning ordinance itself was passed in 63. Uh, no, it was in the late 80s. Oh. We, thought... we didn't have zoning. They had what was known as four-way zoning until about... The late well, 80s, okay. Yeah, the late 80s. Um, and then I don't know when 171.20 and 171.21 uh, were specifically um, made a part of the zoning bylaws, but I think that would be the that would have to be the determination as to whether or not a pre-existing non-conforming uh, um, was another option um, to understand exactly when the kitchen went in. Yeah. I suppose it gets a little more complicated then because then are we moving <laughs> a pre-existing non-conforming use, which is probably difficult to show. Uh, I mean, difficult to get through. Um, so yeah, it says, I'm, I'm looking at it, and you, I'm sure you looked at it, 171-12. And the first thing is, you have, it says the lawful use of any structure or land. So yeah, that may be whether it was lawful, was there a permit for it? But let's assume that it was lawful. Um, and then your point at the time of the adoption of the bylaw or subsequent amendment, so you'd have to figure out that. But assuming you got over that hurdle, um, right then, <laughs> no yeah. non use shall be changed or extended except right. to a conforming use that might still be a conforming use. No shall any, any non conforming building or structure be altered, changed, reconstructed, or extended. And then there's other exceptions there. So you have a bunch of hurdles to yeah it definitely feels like a, a path with a lot more hurdles in it than acquiring adequate frontage to request a conversion from a one family to a two family yeah confront it gets that frontage and then it's very streamlined i i would yeah, yeah I uh, would think okay so um so uh, again i if i misunderstood what was being requested of us uh, to present this evening. I I, I apologize. Uh, no, I don't think you did. Okay. I don't. Think you've you did covered a lot of you've covered a lot of ground. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the ownership. Uh, I mean, with the testimony of one of our board members' personal knowledge of the kitchen being there since '69. <laughs> um, My unexpected witness. Unexpected yeah. witness. We got lots of parties in that basement. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I, and then, uh, then otherwise, we're uh, sadly uh, we're asking for a further continuance so that we can explore the potential for coming back to you with adequate frontage to 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 just streamline this into um, into an application for um, conversion. I I I'm we're happy to give that. I I would like to get in writing your re or uh, Roger will an email suffice? Oh sure. Yeah. Yes, okay. just an email asking for a continuance and and Roger what language do I want for that so that does, we don't slide so beyond. And I'm so sorry but does my does my narrative not suffice as that request? Did you it's very well right. I did I did request a continuance. I am so sorry. I read it's the okay. narrative pretty closely, but I think I <laughs> uh, I think it's the last paragraph. Um, oh, I'm sure you're correct. I and if and Roger, would that suffice? Yeah, it says you expect that we will need a further continuance there. I suppose after. it's it was it was <laughs> it's, 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 it's kind of it's not quite direct okay right i can finish mine but send an email to just i'll send an email to just confirm that we're requesting the continuance to explore these other options yes now we are next um we are beyond the point where we can really schedule for july and it's too mm -hmm. soon anyway i'm sure for you yeah um, i, I, I think we're first... gonna need yep 
So that would bring us to August 1. Um, and I wonder, uh, and I forgot, are you first and third? No, you're- uh, We're the first. First Thursday. First, first Thursday. Thursday and third Thursday, or it's just only no. the first just, Thursday. Just so this is month. just a special one you said up for us. Um, I, I, I'm kind of concerned because I believe my clients are going to be away for a bit. Uh, and without having fully consulted with them, I'm just saying I'm concerned August 1st might be a little too soon given. That's what, fine. We can go know, into uh, September. Yeah, I think, uh, I think, uh, Amy, we probably should not try to schedule this any earlier than September. Okay. Okay, so that would be September fifth. Sounds and, good. And um, and all right, so that would be, and, and just respectfully, um, if we need further time, if we if we find that yeah. our fifth is going to be too soon, I'd like to know, um, you know, what makes it like? Should we give at least one week's notice or two weeks' notice, or what does that look like? Yeah, could I simply email and request? For the continuance without appearing or oh sh sure isn't that correct roger yeah yeah okay. we just we just need you to acknowledge that you are the ones requesting, requesting this continuance it. Yep. so that we are not failing to act thank you okay um, so it, it, we will i'm going to have this tentatively scheduled for september 5th with the understanding that you may need more time absolutely um if if I could, I, I, I'd really, I'm sure you are all familiar with this. I'm sure Roger, more than most, is familiar with um, the role uh, we play as lawyers often for folks in these municipal proceedings is to help them understand the statutes and help them understand the impact of uh, the words they use when they speak to city officials, uh, request permits. Um, I think there was a great deal of confusion um, and all we want to do is sort it out and uh, do our best to find a path forward for a permissible use of the property in the condition that it's currently in. I certainly understand that. All right. Well, thank you all so much for your time. Um, okay. We will hopefully see you September 5th. I'll shoot an email back to the group right now um, requesting that. And then if anything changes and we get towards the end of August and it looks like we need more time, I'll just um, make another email request. That's, or continuous. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. So, ZBA, do I have a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. I'll second. second. Okay. I'm going to stop the recording now.